what was done differently for this particular half when we compare it with the first half of 2017? Um, thank you, Michael. It's a pleasure to be on the, on the line with you. I think uh, nothing has been done differently. We're, we're just executing the same strategy we've been executing for the last five years. As you know, investments is a game of timing, and sometimes uh, you're able to make realizations that um, that have taken time. So it's value that has been created over time, and uh, you know it's a strategy we continue to execute with discipline. So if I look, I think the key number is how we've done from an NAV growth perspective over the last five years, and that we've almost doubled. So, so that's what we'll continue to do. We are not really driven so much by short-term earnings, but rather by uh, the long-term growth in the value of, uh, of shareholder value. Mm. James, of course, we're looking at this as a recovery for the company from last year's losses, mostly from the banking sector. How hard were you hit by the rating caps? The rating cap affected uh, the bank we've invested in, uh, Cedian Bank, uh, largely because we are ending to a segment of the economy, uh, microfinance and uh, small enterprises. And so when the cap was affected, it had a huge impact on our net interest income. Uh, subsequent to that, over the last two years, we've been diversifying uh, into other lines of business at the bank, uh, into trade finance business, and enhancement of non-funded income. And that has increased uh, significantly. And I believe that uh, by 2019, the bank will be profitable again. All right. Now allow us to move on now to the total assets. Of course, we saw them growing to 101,000 just from 66,000 from the same period a year ago. And then the date to asset ratio also, on the other hand, just jumped from 0 uh, 0.25 to a good 0.48%. Of course, we're still looking at uh, much of the assets, of course, financing here, financed. But tell me, aren't we moving rather faster from that perspective? And a good brief on that? OK, if you look at the company balance sheet, mm. uh, assets have grown to about 67 billion mm. shillings. Uh, the debt was largely flat. Uh, the intention is to, we have a number of exits in the pipeline. Uh, we intend to to repay our all our entire long-term debt as it matures. And therefore, over the next two to three years, our, our target is that the center balance sheet at the top should be debt-free. And operating subsidiaries can then take on debt at their individual individual balance sheets. Mm. So I don't think you I don't think you'll expect to see growth in debt at the same time balance sheet uh, level. All right. Uh, allow us now to move on, James, of course, to other interesting conversations. Just uh, about last week, we saw uh, the president of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, signing bilateral agreements with the Mozambican counterpart. We still know that uh, in 2017, Kenya's imports from Mozambique were worth $31 million, but only uh, exports to Mozambique from Kenya were about $12 million. When we look at these uh, agreements being signed by the government, of course, knowing that uh, most of the coal that comes into the country comes from Mozambique, and you're still looking to build a coal-fired plant, and you're still investing in, in the agribusiness. Tell me, does this at all help your cause? Does it, uh, you, do you see significance uh, from it? Yeah, at, um, at a macro level, uh, enhancement of regional trade is good for the economy, and that cuts across every specific asset in our, in our portfolio. Uh, there have been a number of agreements that have been signed, not just with Mozambique, but also recently the Kenya government signed a bilateral agreement with China that has opened up uh, a range of new products. We also have direct flights to the U.S., which has also opened up a number of uh, export-oriented products. We are invested in the agribusiness sector, so some of the products that have now been listed as eligible for exports, we are exploring uh, new markets. But also to your question, uh, Mozambique is a... Uh, is a major coal producer, and yes, it may be one of the countries that uh, the power plant sources uh, coal from, provided it meets the technical specifications from a heat content and also from, a, uh, you know, the, the, the number of uh, technical specifications that the fuel needs to comply with. So if we get a good price from them, why not?
Right. Uh, James, uh, when we look at uh, news from Kenya, mainly we see that uh, Kenya's property market is sitting on sinking sand. Others are looking at uh, more demand on the market and also uh, looking at uh, dampening of house prices. Tell me, you are investing in this particular industry, of course, the real estate with uh, uh, the two river development. You're still uh, working on the Marina deal in Uganda. Tell me, uh, how do we brace? How does our centum brace itself towards a sinking real estate or property market in Kenya? Uh, I would not say it's sinking. If you look at the evidence over the last uh, six months in uh, Bipingo alone, we've had sales of infill developments. These are apartments and residential houses of slightly over a billion shillings, which is $10 million. We have had sales of development rights of uh, 400 million shillings. In Uganda, where we have Palmarina, we've had sale of residential developments of uh, slightly over 700 million shillings. And really, our point is that you need to very carefully ensure that the product you're supplying is what the market wants. So we go through a market validation exercise. And once you do that, I think there's still pockets, significant pockets of unmet supply. And it's our responsibility as investors to make sure we have taken the time to understand what the market wants and to supply to the market and, and, you, and you'll be successful. Mm. James, before I let you go, of course, we would love to look at uh, a long-term target or performance that you're looking at. What is the way forward for uh, Centum? Of course, we're still seeing uh, the company level profitability improving to a one billion from a prior period where you were making uh, losses, but now you're coming back on track. Tell me, how do we see this company mm. moving into 2019? So uh, we just uh, last week, our new center 4.0 strategy was approved. This was a strategy that will take us from 2019 for the next five years. And I think just to highlight the key areas of focus, one is around the target return and also a enhancement of dividend payout. So we are looking at enhancing the payout of uh, the dividend that we pay our shareholders. We're also looking at uh, changing the mix of the return we get and skewing it more towards a cash return. Uh, we're also looking at strengthening the balance sheet even further by repaying the debt and diverting the cash flows that we're currently incurring on debt service to enhancing uh, a shareholder return. So if you look at the next five years, uh, our vision is that Centum should be one of those companies that is offering one of the most attractive returns to its uh, shareholders. I expect with what we are putting in place that profitability will actually improve in the next over the next five years, largely because we had a significant pool of assets that were in the development phase, including our real estate assets, that are now in the pipeline where we are currently selling. And as those profits are realized, currently they're not included in the P&L, uh, you should see even further improvements on bottom line profitability in the coming years. All right. Uh, James, allow me to leave it right here. And thank you very much for creating time to speak to CNBC Africa. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure speaking to you, Michael. Thank you. All right.